What's up, hello, and welcome to today's 360 Life video. Today we are taking a look at Oculus's new HMD that should be coming to the market in the spring of 2019, which at the time of filming this video is just around the corner. So let's dig a little deeper into just what is the Oculus Quest. Welcome back, and thanks for sticking around. Remember, if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more VR-related content. So, back in 2016, we were first introduced to Project Santa Cruz at Oculus Connect 3. Then 2017 came and we learned a little bit more at OC4. Well, finally, and most recently during OC5, which was back in September of 2018, Mark Zuckerberg announced Project Santa Cruz was going into production as the Oculus Quest and would hit the shelves at $399 in the spring of 2019. And with it, the Zuck promised 50 titles at launch. More on that in a minute. With any luck, we will see this in store soon. And with last year's announcement of Oculus's Go going up for pre-sale during Facebook's annual F8 Developers Conference, I strongly suspect, along with many other VR YouTubers, we will see Quest go up for sale between April 30th and May 1st during this year's conference. So what is Oculus Quest? Oculus Quest is Oculus's standalone and mobile VR headset. It has six degrees of freedom, utilizing four built-in cameras for inside out tracking, along with hand tracking as well. And what does all that mean? Well, it means you get a completely wireless experience with no need for any PC or external sensors. It has a resolution of 1600 by 1440 per eye and is locked at 72 Hertz. And while this resolution is an increase over the Rift's 1080 by 1200, it still does not completely eliminate the screen door effect, but certainly takes a step towards minimizing it. For audio, it has built-in speakers delivering spatial 360 degree sound directly to your ears, much like Oculus Go's, which definitely adds to an immersive experience. While this setup has both pros and cons, the biggest negative is probably just that the outside world can hear what you are experiencing. The Quest uses a Qualcomm mobile CPU, specifically the Snapdragon 835. And while not Qualcomm's latest CPU, which is the Snapdragon 845, it is a generation ahead of the Oculus Go's 821 processor. So, while we may get Rift-like experiences with six degrees of freedom, don't expect PC-level graphics or complexity. Through proper optimization, however, developers should be able to produce some great standalone experiences. Another nice feature to see is that the Quest is imploring active cooling with an in-headset fan, which should help alleviate the overheating issues some Go, Go users see with its passively cooled metal-plated front heatsink. At launch, it sounds like it will be equipped with 64 gigabytes of internal storage, with other options currently being considered. It uses controllers very similar to Rift Touch controllers, with slightly different ergonomics, but otherwise functionally the same, including capacitive touch. As I previously mentioned, there are supposed to be 50 titles available at the time of launch. I imagine a lot of these will be ports from other mobile platforms, like the Go and Gear VR. We do know we are getting at least one exclusive, Star Wars Vader Immortal, which is part one of a three-part series, and as a bit of a Star Wars nerd, excites the hell out of me. In this video, I'm not going to get into all of the titles that are gonna be coming, because I will be releasing a video specifically on that topic next week. But briefly, we are getting Moss, The Climb, Robo Recall, Super Hot VR, Dead and Buried, and face your fears too, in the least. And we know there will be several non-gaming apps as well, making their way onto the Quest platform at launch. So for $399, you get all of this. And for whom is this platform targeted? First, I think this will be a great platform for new users who don't own a VR capable PC or PlayStation. I also think it is going to be a great platform for hardcore VR users who want to experience six degrees of freedom on the go with a mobile platform. 
Also, I think this suits casual users who are maybe coming from a Go or a Gear VR and who want to step up to six degrees of freedom while maintaining the standalone platform. Certainly there will be a crowd that is not interested in this mobile platform and are holding out for new iterations on the PC. But if those people find themselves away from their desktop, perhaps Oculus Quest can serve as a backup. This should give you a good idea of what the Oculus Quest is all about. And if you want to learn more, then be sure to look out for next week's video where I go over all the titles set for launch and dig into what developers are working on new titles for the launch as well. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe for more VR news and reviews. Most importantly, don't forget to enjoy that 360 life.